Hello everyone, this is Siddharthan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the seventh project video in our machine learning project series. So in this video, we are going to see how we can build a wine quality prediction system using machine learning that can predict the quality of the wine using some chemical parameters. Okay. So in this channel, I'm making the hands on machine learning course with Python. So I will be posting the videos on this course order on Monday and Wednesday evening every week. And on Friday evening, I will be posting a machine learning project video. Okay. So now let's get started with today's video. First, let's understand more about this problem statement. Consider that there is a wine manufacturing company. Okay. And this company want to create a new brand of wine. And let's, let's say that you are a experienced data scientist and they want you to find the quality of the wine using several chemical parameters like acidity, citric acid content, sugar content, etc. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to build a machine learning system that can take all these chemical values or chemical parameters and tell you whether the quality of the wine is good or not, or how good the quality of the wine is. Okay, so this is the problem statement we have. Now let's understand the workflow we are going to follow for this particular use case. Okay, so the first step is getting the data set. So we need this wine data set which has this chemical parameters value and the label value. So here the label is nothing but the quality of the wine. Okay, so we will train our machine learning model using this labeled data set. So when you train a machine learning model with labeled data set, so that type of learning is called as supervised learning. So when you use a non labeled data set, it is called as unsupervised learning. So you can uh, find videos on this topic in my channel as supervised versus unsupervised learning. Okay. So once we have this fine data set, we will do some data analysis on this data set. Okay. So what is this data analysis? So we have several values or several parameters in this data set. So we need to find which parameters are important for uh, having the quality of the wine as good. Okay, so there can be several relationship between various features of the value. So for example, I have told you that we will be uh, analyzing the values on citric acid content, acidity, etc. So we need to find uh, what is the relationship between the citric acid content and quality of the wine. So we need to check whether the quality increases if we increase the citric acid content and other such kind of things. So that all the things will be done in data analysis part. And we will also use some visualizing techniques like plots and graphs to understand this. So this part is known as data analysis. This data analysis part gives you a better understanding of the data set you have. So once we have analyzed our wine data set, we will pre-process the data. So this step is called as data pre-processing. So we cannot feed this raw data to our machine learning model. So we need to do some processing so that it, it becomes compatible with our machine learning model. So once we process the data, there is another important step called as train test split. So in this particular step, so we will split our original data set into training data and test data. Okay. So the reason for this is we will train our machine learning model using this training data and we won't show this uh, test data to our machine learning model for training. So this test data is used to evaluate our model to find how good our model is performing. So this is the reason for splitting the data into training and test data where training data is used to train the model to learn from the data and the test data is used to evaluate or test the model. Okay. So we will feed this training uh, data to our machine learning model. So in this case, we are going to use a random forest model. So random forest is one of the most important supervised learning algorithm in machine learning. So I will be explaining you the basic functioning of a random forest while we are implementing this in our code. Okay, so once we have trained this uh, random forest model, we will evaluate it based on our test data. Okay, so it gives us the accuracy score or the performance metrics of our machine learning model. Okay, so once we have done that, we will be having a trained random forest model. So what happens is when you give a new data, uh, those chemical parameters, this uh, trained model can predict the quality of the wine. So this is the workflow we are going to follow for this particular use case. Okay, so I hope you understood about this. Now let's get into the coding part. Okay, so I will be doing the coding in Google Collaboratory. So Google Collaboratory is a Python environment where you can run Python codes. So if you are new to Google Collaboratory or you, you, you haven't experienced or worked on it before, you can check out my Google Collaboratory basics video. So the index of this video is 2.1 in my channel. So do check out if you are new to this. Now, so here you can run your Python code. So here there will be this connect option where you can connect this to the system. So and then you can run your Python codes. 
So I have already uploaded my data set here. So this is our data set wine quality red dot CSV. Okay, so this is a CSV file and I got this data set from Kaggle. So you can just search as wine quality data set in Kaggle in uh, Google search. So you the, you will find pages from Kaggle from where you can download this uh, wine data set. So Kaggle is a very good place to find several data sets and other machine learning uh, codes. So now let's get into the coding part. I'll just include a text here. So the first step is to import the dependencies. Dependencies are nothing but the Python libraries and functions that we are going to use in our code. Okay, so I'll just make a text as importing the dependencies. Okay, so you can press shift plus enter to run this code and go to the next one. Okay, so now let's import the libraries. First, let's import numpy. So import numpy as np so numpy is used to create numpy arrays okay so then let's import pandas as pd okay so this pandas data this pandas library is used to create pandas data frame and this data frame is very useful for analyzing the data and process the data so that's why we are importing it so i'm just importing this pandas and in the short form as pd so this is what this is the con uh, you know convention we do in machine learning and then let's import matplotlib.py plot as plt. So this is for making plots and graphs. And we need another visualization library, which is called as Cbond. This Cbond is really helpful for uh, data visualization and making plots and graphs like matplotlib. So import Cbond as SNS. Okay. Now from sklearn dot model selection let's import train test split so this train test split function is used to split our data into training data and test data so we won't be splitting the data manually rather we will be using this function for this particular purpose okay now let's import our random forest classifier model so from sklearn dot ensemble so random forest is an ensemble model which uses more than uh, two or three models so that is meant by ensemble so random forest is a decision tree ensemble model so i will be explaining about uh, explaining you about this decision tree ensemble and random forest when we are implementing this later in this video so do wait for that so from sklearn.ensemble import random forest classifier okay so this is the model we need now we need to import accuracy score from sklearn dot metrics import accuracy score so this accuracy score is used to evaluate our model to find how well our model is performing okay so now let's run this so plus press shift plus enter so this will run this cell so we have imported all the dependencies the next step is data collection okay so as i have told you earlier you can get the data from kaggle so data collection okay so you can just go to this folder options here and here you can give this upload a uh, key or you can just press the or you can just right click here and go to this upload option to upload the data set so you will be downloading this data set from kaggle so i'll also give the link for this data set in the description of this video okay so i'll just go ahead and copy this path from here so copy path and now we need to load this csp file into this pandas data frame okay so loading the data set to a pandas data frame let's create the data frame as wine data set so i am naming the data frame as wine data set which is equal to pd.readcsv this read csv function is used to read the csv file and load it into our data frame so you can paste the data set uh, path here so let's run this so this will load our data set to this data frame now you can 
check the number of rows and columns in your data set so number of rows and columns in the data set so for that you can use this function so mention your data frame name which is find dot data set dot shape this shape function gives us the number of rows and columns so as you can see here we have 1599 rows which means 1000 uh, 599 different wine values and 12 columns these columns are nothing but uh, the chemical parameters as i have told you earlier okay so now let's check the sample of this data set to see what are the different features or columns we have in this data frame so we are going to see the first five rows of the data set okay so mention your data frame name which is wine data set dot Yet. So this yet function is used to print the first five rows of the data frame. So as you can see here, totally we have 1599 values of that. We are printing the first five uh, rows. So this is the index value and we have 12 columns here. Okay, so the last column is the quality of the way of the wine. So we have the values such as five, six. So we will be dealing or we will be understanding about that uh, quite soon. So we have other 11 columns so totally 11 columns are there and the 12th column is our label which is the quality of the wine so we have various chemical parameters such as fixed acidity volatile acidity citric acid content residual sugars chlorides free sulfur dioxide total sulfur dioxide amount density ph value sulfates alcohol etc okay so we will be training our machine learning model with this all these data and using this data it should predict the quality of the wine okay so this is what we are going to do so as we have seen the sample of this data set so there is another important step which you need to do in all your uh, machine learning projects which is to check whether there are any missing values in your data set okay so checking for missing values so wine data set you can use the function is null so this returns any null values or missing values if present in your data set column wise so yes null dot sum you can run this to check how many missing values are there in each column as you can see here we don't have any missing values in our data set so it is a very great thing so if you have any missing values you cannot feed it directly to our machine learning model so we need to uh, replace those missing values so there are two basic steps which we will do so if we have any missing values so let's say that we have a missing value in this uh, third row okay so in this volatile acidity and other uh, columns so what we will do is we will drop that particular row or else there is another way so you can find the mean of that particular value let's say that this uh, particular value is missing in volatile acidity so we will find the mean of this column of this entire values and we will put that mean value in this uh, place so this is how you can uh, add the missing values there are also other steps which we will discuss in some other projects so in this case we don't have any missing values so we can proceed with the code and the next step as we have discussed is data analysis and visualization so data analysis sorry so data analysis and visualization okay so first let's get some statistical measures of the data set statistical measures of the data set so mention the data frame name wine data set dot describe this describe function is used to uh, find the uh, statistical measures such as mean standard deviation percentage etc so let's run this as you can see here it gives the count which is the number of values we have so totally we have 1599 values in each column and then we have this mean value so the mean value for fixed acidity is 8 and for volatile acidity the mean value is 0.52 and all those things and we have the standard deviation and we have the minimum value maximum value and also we have the three percentile values 25th percentile 50th percentile and 75th percentile so percentile basically means so if 25 percentile it means 25 percentage of the values are less than 7.1 for fixed acidity 50 percentile means it's uh 50 percentage of the values are less than this 7.9 value okay so these are not percentages but percentiles okay so as we have got the statistical measure so this is very helpful to see 
what is the range of the values we have in each column so as you can see here in this particular column the range is around 7 to 9 and uh, in this citric acid column the value is around uh, you can see the mean value here too so it's around 0.2 and uh, such kind of thing so it is very helpful to understand our data better okay so now what we will do is so we will find the number of uh, rows or number of data points we have for each quality value okay so totally we have 1599 wine uh, data points so 1599 different wines and we shall check the number of wines for each quality value so i'll just put this as number of values for each quality okay you, for this we are going to use this seaborn uh, function seaborn's library so for making this plot so just put sns we have imported this seaborn's uh, in the short form as sns okay so sns dot cat plot so in the x i want this quality value so this quality is nothing but this data frame okay so this point data set so the name of this column is quality so x is equal to quality and in the y axis i want so let's mention the y axis before that we need to mention the data so the data here is nothing but the wine data set okay so in the x we have quality wine data set and kind discount so we need to find the number of values so for that we need to mention count so these are the features or parameters present in this cat plot function okay so let's run this so these are the different quality values so we don't have the quality values as uh, 2 and 1 so the quality value starts from 3 and it goes to 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay so we have the these six values okay so if the quality value is less that means the wine quality is bad if it is uh, a year like 7 or 8 then the wine quality is high okay so this is the inference we are getting so we have totally 6 quality values and another important thing is the number of values are greater for 5 and 6 okay so that is one of the main thing to note here now what we will do is we will do some more analysis to see which values are related to quality okay so here you can see uh, see totally we have 11 parameter value or chemical parameter value and the 12th value is quality so we will compare these values with the quality and see which is related or correlated with this quality column so and make another plot for this so what we will do is let's first of all compare any random columns so i'll just take this volatile acidity column and quality column and plot them volatile acidity versus quality okay now i'll create the plot and store the uh, plot in the variable called as plot so here we are going to use both the libraries matplotlib which is plt and cbonds as sns so we are going to use both these libraries so plot is equal to plt dot figure this figure is used to create the graph okay so plt dot figure and figure size okay so figure size is equal to let's say 5 comma 5 so if you give 10 comma 10 the size of the graph will be large so i want a pretty small graph that's why i'm mentioning 5 to 5 so you can give any values you want based on the size required for you so now let's create a bar plot so sns dot bar plot and in the x-axis i want quality okay and in the y, y axis we have mentioned that we need the volatile acidity value okay so the x axis is equal to quality and y axis is equal to volatile acidity okay so we have missed a quote here so x is equal to quality and y is equal to volatile acidity and the data is nothing but the data present in point data set
Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so as you can see here, if the wine, uh, the volatile quality is I, then the quality of the wine is less. If the volatile quality is low, so here you can see here for the quality to be I, the volatile acidity value should be around 0.5. And if the value of the volatile acidity is large, then the wine quality is 3 and 4. So this means that the volatile acidity and quality are inversely proportional. So I, the value of volatile, quality, uh, uh, volatile acidity, low will be the quality of the wine. So this is the main inference we are getting here. Okay, so likewise, let's compare other values as well. Okay, so we have compared the volatile acidity and quality. Now what we will do is let's compare this citric acid value and quality. So we are just going to do the same thing. So we just need to change the volatile acidity to citric acid. So citric acid content. And quality so the x-axis remains the same and this changes to citric acid okay citric acid so let's run this now so as you can see here this is opposite to our volatile acidity graph so here what we are inferring is if the citric acid content is more then we are getting high quality of wine so if the citric acid value is low then the quality is not high okay so this is another important inference we are getting so this is the advantage of doing the data analysis part so it helps us to understand our data better it helps us to understand which columns are uh, more related to our label so in this case the label is quality we see that the volatile acidity value is inversely proportional to quality and the citric acid value is directly proportional to quality so if we have a high quality high citric acid content then the quality is good which means the wine is good okay so you can do this same step for all these other columns okay so you can check this for residual sugar chlorate value etc so you just need to change this uh, citric acid into uh, other columns such as chlorides and uh, free sulfur dioxide etc so this will uh, give you different plots and from that you can infer which uh, columns are directly proportional to quality and which are inversely proportional to quality okay so this is one main thing in understanding the inference of the uh, data now what we will do is let find the correlation of this columns correlation so we have plotted this graphs right now what we are going to do is we are going to find the correlation between uh, all the columns to the quality column so i'll just I'll do this and explain you so i'll create a variable as correlation which is equal to wine data set dot core so corr represents correlation so it will find the correlation between the data so correlation there are two kinds of correlation they are one is positive correlation and the second one is negative correlation okay so what is meant by this positive correlation or negative correlation if two values are uh, you know two values are positively correlated if one value increases and the other value also increases if one value decreases and other value decreases uh, they are inversely proportional so this inverse proportionality is nothing but negative correlation so we are going to find that between different features so features are columns so for that we are going to construct a heat map to find the correlation between these two columns so constructing a heat map to understand the correlation between the columns okay so plt dot figure let's mention the figure size as so i want a larger graph in this case for correlation matrix so i just make sure 10 comma 10 so this will give us a large graph than the these uh, box plots okay so 10 comma 10 sns.eatmap is the function to construct the heat map 
so heat map and here we need to mention several parameters so you can see the parameters here so we are going to mention the important parameters so i'll first give the parameter value and explain you about each of the parameters so first is correlation and color bar is equal to true and square is equal to true and we have this fmt so i want this float value to be one floating point value so you want fmt is equal to dot one f okay and i want the annotations so annot is equal to true and annot kws is equal to size is equal to 8 and I want the color map value to be let's have blue color okay so C map is equal to blues okay so let me run this so we got the correlation matrix now I'll explain you about the parameters which I have used okay so you can see this uh, first parameter which is correlation so i want to plot this heat map with this correlation data so this correlation is data is nothing but the core function we have used right on this wine data set so this will find the correlation values and i want to use that correlation values on a heat map okay so it will find uh, the proportionality between all the columns so that is what is meant by correlation and then we have this color bar so this is this color bar okay so this gives how much correlated the values are and then we have this square i want all this to be in the square forms so i have given true and fmt is equal to dot one f values so we have uh, one floating point values so that's why i have used one f so if you just put two here we will get two floating point values and we have given annotations is equal to true annotations are nothing but these uh, values so we have this fixed acidity citric acid etc right so these are nothing but annotations and this is the size of this annotation text and color maps i want the color to be blue okay so now let's uh, analyze this heat map so as you can see here we have all the columns all the 12 columns here and we also have the 12 columns here this will compare the correlation between the two columns okay so we have this uh, color bar here so darker the color so the value will be a one for the most darkest color it means the two values are very close to each other so if one value increases the other value also increases so and we have this negative values minus 0.6 for a uh, color which is very light so what happens is it represents the two values are inversely proportional if one value uh, increases the other value decreases okay now so you can see this uh, particular graph and see which points are darker okay so this diagonal is dark and you can see this here so we have this first column fixed acidity and we also have this first column fixed acidity so basically both the two columns are same okay and here we have this uh, volatile acidity and here also we have this volatile acidity which is values one so you need to ignore this particular diagonal whose value is one because they basically contain the same column so this is not significant but the other values are significant say for example let's uh, look at this final quality column so you can find which value is uh, very dark in color okay so we have this uh, value as 0.5 which means it's directly correlated with the quality of the wine so you can uh, see that we have this correlation of quality and alcohol so as 0.5 so that means they are directly proportional or they are positively correlated so you can uh, find the light color so this is the light color which is minus 0.4 value so we have this volatile acidity and quality so it, it is light color it means they are negatively correlated so we have already seen that if the volatile acidity value is more the quality of the wine is less okay so this is what the important inference we can get from the correlation matrix so it tells which values are positively correlated which columns are positively correlated and which columns are negatively correlated so this is about data analysis uh, data analysis and visualization which is used to understand our data better okay so we are done with the data analysis part the next step which we have discussed earlier is data pre-processing right so it is the next step in our workflow so i just mentioned the text as data pre-processing so 
Now what we need to do is we need to separate our data and label. So here the label is this quality column, right? So we need to separate all these data and this quality column because we will uh, feed this uh, data separately to our machine learning model. So let's put all these data in one variable and this quality column alone in one variable. Okay. Now we are going to separate the data and label. Okay, so let's create the variable as x. So x is equal to wine data set so dot drop. So wine dot drop. So we want to drop this label column. So mention uh, the label. So in this case, the label is nothing but the quality column, right? So mention quality and axis is equal to one. So when you are dropping a column, you need to mention that the axis is equal to one. And if you are dropping a particular row, you need to mention the axis value as zero. Okay. So we are going to drop this quality column alone. So let's run this. Now you can print the six. So you can see here, we don't have this uh, quality column at the end. So we have dropped it from our data frame. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to store this quality column or this label in a different variable. Okay. So, but there is another thing we need to do before extracting and storing the label in different variables. So that step is nothing but label binarization. So I'll just make a text as label binarization. So you can see the quality and the number of counts. So we have these values for quality, right? So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what I want to do is I want to just binarize this values. Binarize means I want this quality to be two values. So I want uh, the labels to be good and bad. So if the quality is seven or it's greater than seven, I want the quality to be good. And if the quality value for a wine is six or less than six, then the quality of the wine is bad. Okay, so this is what I want to do. So instead of having this six quality value, I just want two quality values or two label values. So this is nothing but binarization because we are binarizing uh, the labels into two particular values. So let's create the variable as y and we will binarize the value and store it in y. So mention wine data set. So wine data quality. So I want to convert this quality column. So I want to uh, replace the values which are seven and greater than seven <coughs> to a good quality y. And uh, the values six and less than six should be bad. Okay, so that's what I want to do. So instead of putting good and bad, let's use one and zero as our labels because numerical values are always better for processing. So what we will do is we will replace all the values of uh, six and less than six to zero and all the values of seven and eight to one. Okay, so let, let me show to you how we can do that. So you can use the supply function. So for this, we can use this particular concept in Python, which is Lambda. So this Lambda function is used for these kind of operations where we need to replace the values. So replace, let's take the variable as Y value. So I want the Y value to be one. If Y value is greater than or equal to seven. Okay. Yes, I want the value to be zero. Okay, so you can just uh, see this line again. So I'm taking this wine data set and that and in that wine data set, I'm taking this quality column and in that I'm going to apply a specific function. So this is called as the Lambda function. So what in this Lambda function, what I'm doing is I'm just giving the value as one if the Y value is greater than or equal to seven. Okay, so what happens is if the quality value is uh, seven or greater than seven, I want to replace those values with one. And then I will, uh, if the values are less than seven, I will replace it with zero. Okay, so let me run this. And now let me print Y. So now we don't, we don't have five, six, seven or those kind of values. So we will be having either zero or one. Okay, so this is what we have done. So in between this, there will be one and other labels as well. So zero and one are the two labels we are using. So this is called as label binarization or label encoding. Okay. So the next step is to split the data into training and test data. So train and test data. 
So let me put a strain and test split. Okay, so we are going to split the original data into training and test data because we are going to train our machine learning model with this training data and we are going to evaluate it with our test data. Okay, so for that you need to create four variables x train and x test and y train <coughs> and y test. Okay, now you can use the function train test split. So as you can see from the dependencies uh, cell here. So we have imported this train test split function from sklearn.model selection. So we are going to use that train test split function. Okay. So let me put these parameters and explain you what is meant by these parameters. So I want the test size to be 0.2 and I want the random state to be let's say 2. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating four variables. So we have X train and X test, Y train and Y test. So our data, which is X will be split into X train data and X test data. So this X train is our, our training data and X test is our testing data. And the labels or the quality value, which is zero or one for all these X train data will be stored in this Y train and the label values for this X test will be stored in this Y test. So that's why we are creating this four uh, variables. Okay, so we are using this train test split uh, function. So I want to split this X and Y to these four arrays. Okay, so now I am just mentioning this test size is equal to 0.2. So test size is equal to 0.2 means I want a point to represent 20 percentage, right? So I want the 20 percentage of the original data to be test data. Okay, so for example, if the original data set contains 100 data points, so the 20 percentage of it, which is 20 data points will be test data and 80 percentage will be training data. So generally we have the test data as 10 percentage of the overall data, or 20 percentage of the overall data. So that is the convention we generally use. And then we have the ran random state. So you can give random state as any value. So the use of this random state is that if you want to split the data the same way as I am splitting, you need to mention this two. If I am putting three here, so if you want to split the data in the same way that I am splitting, you need to mention this uh, random state as three. Okay, so it is just basically to reproduce the code exactly. So that is the reason for this random state. So this function will split the data into four variables containing x test, x train, x test, y train, and y test. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so now we can check the shape of the data. So we can check how many data points are there in training data and test data. So let's put x dot shape, sorry, y dot shape. Y is nothing but the label. So y dot shape and y train dot shape. And we have y test dot shape. Okay, so let's run this. This y is the original data point and y train is the training data. Y test is the test data. So we have totally 1599 uh, values in our original data set. Out of those, 1279 values are used for training and 320 values are used for testing our model. So we have successfully split our data into training and test data. So the next step is training our model. Okay, so I'll put a text here as model training so in this case we are going to use a random forest classifier model so random forest classifier okay so let me explain you about this model okay so As I have told you earlier, random forest is an ensemble model. So ensemble models are those that uses uh, more than two or three models in combination for uh, prediction. Okay, so it is an ensemble model of decision tree. Okay, so this is an example of decision tree model. So this is a single decision tree. Okay, so decision trees are also important uh, machine learning models. So these uh, circles are nothing but nodes. So we have multiple nodes here. So this is the node or root node and uh, this node contains two other nodes. So these are nothing but the branching nodes. So what happens is, so consider this wine quality example data. Okay, so the model checks the citric acid value. So let's consider this example that this particular node 
uh, checks the citric acid value let's say that if the citric acid value is greater than 0.5 then the wine quality will be uh, good if the value of citric acid is less than 0.5 the quality will be less okay so take this particular node so it will check for the citric acid value so if the value is less than 0.5 it will go to this node if the value of that particular data point is greater than 0.5 it will go to this particular node so again it will uh, check for other other uh, parameters like uh, the acidity value and other such kind of things okay so this is how a, a simple single decision tree works okay so it checks for different values and random forest is nothing but it is an ensemble model of different decision trees, multiple decision trees. So as you can see here, so we have a totally uh, n number of decision trees. So more the number of decision trees we have, more accurate our model performances. So each decision tree will give us the result and it will uh, take the mean value or it will check for the majority of the value uh, output by output by this uh, decision trees. So this will be the final result. So this is how the uh, basic random forest algorithm works. So this it basically is a multiple decision tree model. Okay. So this is what we are going to use for our wine quality prediction system. So a lot of people are requesting me to uh, explain uh, in detail about the math behind every model and to build model from scratch. So we will definitely do this in the later module in our machine learning course. You can check my machine learning course curriculum. So once we complete the basic concepts in machine learning, so we will be focusing on the math and logic behind every model and we will be building models from scratch in Python. So we will be definitely doing that in a later point of time because it is very important. So, But in this particular project videos, we won't be discussing detailly about models because it is out of the scope of this particular uh, project videos the idea behind this project video is to give you an understanding of how we can implement all these different models how we can process the data points okay so now in this particular videos we cannot explain in detail about the models so but we will definitely do that in a later point of time so stay tuned for that so as we have discussed how a random forest classifier works now let's train this so i'll create the uh, model sorry the variable name as model and now we need to load our random forest classifier model so if you remember so we have imported this random forest classifier so we need to mention this here model is equal to random forest classifier so this will load the random forest classifier to this model variable okay so let's run this and now let's train our model for training the model we need to use this fit function so when you use this fit function it will, will uh, fit the data points to this random forest classifier okay so let's fit this to our model and in this we need to mention our training data which is x train and y train so the x train is nothing but all the training data and y train is nothing but the label values for these training data so this x train contain all the data values from volatile acidity fixed uh, acidity value citric acid value alcohol content etc and uh, this y train contains the quality value which is 0 or 1 okay so we are going to train our model with these two values and let's run this this will train our uh, model and it will give the all the parameters so you can just change this parameters and see how your model is performing so for example you can change this n estimator value and check the accuracy and such kind of things these are the parameters which we'll discuss later okay so this is how you can uh, train your model using this fit function as we have trained our model the next step is to evaluate our model so evaluation is very important because we need to find the performance metrics or how well our model is performing okay so that is the next step which is model evaluation so model evaluation and for this evaluation we are going to use accuracy score values so i'll explain you in a moment what is meant by this accuracy score okay so let's uh, as i have told you earlier we need to evaluate our model on test data so we will be training our model on this training data which is x train and we will test our data based on this x test data which is the test data okay so accuracy on test data let's create the variable as x test prediction okay so x test prediction is equal to model dot predict 
so inside this model variable we have trained this uh, random forest classifier and we have stored that in the in this variable called as model and this model has the function called as predict so this will function the label value so in this case the labels are nothing but the quality value which are 0 or 1 so this model will predict this label value for x test so i want to find the label value for all these x tests as you can see here for training we have given the labels which is y train and for testing we won't give that label so i'm just mention mentioning this x test and our model has to predict the uh, label values now what i'll do is so all these la label values will be stored in this x text prediction now we need to compare the values predicted by our model and the original label values the original label values are nothing but y test as i have told you earlier so we have split up the data set into x train and uh, x test the label for x train is stored in y train and the label for uh, x test is stored in y test so we need to compare this original label value which is y test to the values predicted or model which is x test prediction okay so now we will find the test data accuracy so test data accuracy is equal to for this we will be using this accuracy score function so if you remember we have imported this accuracy function accuracy score function from sklearn.metrics so here you need to mention the prediction made by your model which is x test prediction so x test prediction so as you can see here so this is the x test prediction and we need to compare this with y test so y test is nothing but the real actual label values and x test prediction is the one that are predicted by our random forest classifier model okay so let me run this and now let's print and see the accuracy score of our model so let's print as accuracy so accuracy is test data accuracy so let's run this so we get the accuracy values 0.9 to 5. So 0.9 to 5 means it's 92.5 percentage, which is almost 93 percentage. So 93 percentage accuracy means out of 100 predictions, our model can predict uh, correctly for 93 values. So which is really good. If we have uh, an accuracy score over 75 or 80 percent, then we can say that our model is performing really well. So we get an accuracy of 93 percentage, which is really really good. So this is how we basically undergo uh, machine learning project for prediction okay so we have successfully used this random forest classifier model to uh, for training the data and based on that training based on that learning we have used this uh, machine learning model to find a prediction to find the label of the wine quality okay so and we have got the accuracy score as 0.925 okay so there is another important step here okay so now what we will do is we will build a predictive system so i'll just put as building a predictive system so building a predictive system so here what we are going to do is so we are going to do some code that will get all the ke uh, chemical parameters for you so for example so if we uh, let's say so let's uh, take this particular example if we give all these chemical parameter values except this quality so our model our machine learning model should find the quality of the wine okay so that is what we want so that is what we are going to do in this predictive system okay so i'll create the variable as input data so in this input data list we will be giving the chemical parameter values except the quality and based on analyzing uh, this uh, particular values our model should predict the quality of the wine so the quality of the wine are either zero or one if the value is zero if the label is zero that means the wine quality is not good if the value is one that means our uh, the quality of the wine is good okay so this is input data okay so i have this data set here so this is the wine quality data set which we have used so i'll open this in a notepad file okay so open with notepad so as you can see here this is a csv file which is a comma separated value file let me take a particular value so let's take a random values okay so let's take this value so as you can see here the last columns the last value is nothing but the quality value which is seven so we have made the model in such a way that if the value is 7 or greater than 7 then we need to say that the quality is a good one 
okay so the label for this is one so i'll copy all these values except the quality value and put this in the input data list okay so input data is equal to the these values okay so now we need to process these values changing the input data to a numpy array okay so this is where why we have imported the numpy array function so numpy arrays are very useful for processing the list or tuple so this is a tuple data type which is enclosed in this parenthesis so we need to come uh, sorry convert this uh, tuple to a numpy array okay so it is more sufficient than list or tuple so we'll create the numpy arrays input data as numpy array for converting this particular data type to a numpy array you can use the function np dot as array okay so now np dot as array so mention this input data okay so what happens is these values will be converted to a numpy array so that is nothing but the input data as numpy array now what we need to do is we need to reshape the data okay so reshape the numpy array or reshape the data as we are predicting the label for only one instance okay so why we are reshaping it is so if we don't reshape the model doesn't know that we are just predicting for only one value so this uh, training data contains 1279 values right so if we if we don't reshape the values then it will look for uh, these many values so we don't want that i want to tell the machine learning model that i'm just predicting for one value for that purpose you need to reshape this particular array so let me put this as input data reshaped okay so input data reshaped is equal to so we need to mention this array name so i'll mention this dot reshape one comma minus one so this is how i want to reshape my array so this is nothing but transforming our uh, array so this will tell the machine learning model i just want to predict the value for one particular instance so this is one particular instance values so that is why we are reshaping the array okay so otherwise the model will be confused looking for thousand values so this tells our model this i want the value for only one value okay so we have uh, reshaped it now we can make the prediction from our model so i'll create a variable called as prediction in which we will store our model prediction so mention model dot predict so this model is nothing but our random uh, forest classifier model which is trained so you can see here see here this is a random forest classifier model so now you can mention this input data reshaped thing here okay so input data reshaped and now let's print this prediction this prediction is nothing but the label value so this will output a value as either 0 or 1 okay so let's run this so here you can see here we have copied the values for which the quality value is 7 that means it should uh, give the label as 1 right because if the value is 7 or greater than uh, 7 we have uh, converted it to 1 so let's run this as you can see here we got the label correctly because so you can uh, see here that we have uh, converted the values for label for 7 and greater than 7 as 1 and other values as 0. So 1 basically represents the quality of the wine as good, right? So let's mention that here using a if condition. So if the prediction, the prediction value is equal to 1, then I want to print that it is a good quality wine okay otherwise else i want to print that it is a bad quality wine okay so what i'm basically doing is so as you can see here this uh, prediction this model dot predict returns a list right so I am just mentioning that list which is this prediction we are storing the prediction in this prediction variable and 
this zero is nothing but I am mentioning the first value in this list. Okay, so if the first value in this list, which is one in this case, if the value is equal to wine, I want to tell that the quality of the wine is good. If the quality of the wine is, uh, is, is the label is zero, then we need to tell that the quality of the wine is bad. Okay, so let's run this again. We got the label as one. So one represents good quality wine because its values is either seven or greater than seven, greater than seven. As you can see here, now let's uh, get the input value for some wine whose value is less than seven. Okay, so let's take this value, which is, as you can see here, the quality of this wine is five. So it is a bad quality wine. So it should output the label as a zero instead of one. And it should say that the quality of the wine is bad. Okay. So I'll just delete all these values and paste the new values, which is the values for a bad quality wine. Okay, so now let's run this. And now we got the label value as zero, which is correct. And we got that the bad, uh, the quality of the wine is bad. Okay, so basically what we are doing is if the quality value is uh, greater than seven, greater than or equal to seven, we will tell that the quality of the wine is good. And if it is less than seven, then the quality of the wine is bad and we will get the label as zero. So this is how you can build a predictive system which will give you the quality of the wine given other chemical parameters. So, okay. So this is what we have uh, discussed in our workflow. So we have successfully created a predictive system that can predict the quality of the wine giving all these parameters. Okay. So I hope you have understood everything we have covered in this video. I'll just give you a quick recap on what we have done in this. So first, first step is importing all the dependencies. So we have imported the libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, uh, etc. And we have also imported the functions like train test split. And then we have collected the data. So we have loaded our data set to a Pandas data frame. And then we have find the shape of the data, number of rows and columns. And we have uh, seen the sample data. And we have checked whether our data set has any missing values. And then we have did some data analysis and visualization on uh, data so in this describe using this describe function we call the statistical measures of the data set and then we have uh, visualized the data using uh, several features so we have found that using this data analysis we have found that the volatile acidity and quality value are inversely proportional whereas the citric acid value and quality are directly proportional so if one increases the other value also increases such kind of things and we have find the positive or negative correlation between various features of the data set so this is nothing but the data analysis part then we have processed our data so we have separated uh, all the data into one variable which is six and all the labels into one variable which is five and the important thing is while binarizing we have uh, converted all the values which are equal to and greater than seven into one and we have uh, converted all the values which are less than seven into zero okay so and then we have split our data set into training data and test data and then we have uh, trained our random forest classifier model and we have found the accuracy of the model which is around 93 percentage and then we have built a predictive system that can tell whether the quality of the wine is good or not so i hope you are clear with all of this so if you have any doubt you can reach me out in any social media so you can reach me out in linkedin or you can join my telegram group where i'll be uh, posting you regular updates on when i'm posting new videos okay so you can uh, expect my videos on monday and wednesday evening and project videos on friday evening i hope you have a good time thanks for watching